Hi. Okay, I think we're going to start. Wow, like the lights came on and everything. That's there must be AI involved in this, or indeed I. Um, so uh, I'm uh, welcome to uh, Mobile Web, Pro the event that we've called Mobile Web Progress. It's kind of a, a name that uh, Diego and I brainstormed uh, for just talking about what's some of the things that are. Um, the most uh, exciting new web technologies that we're working with um, and that we see coming to the mobile in particular, so related to mobile web. Um, I ha uh, my name is Dan Applequist. I work for Samsung Internet. Um, this event is supported and organized by Samsung Internet, but this is very much a, a web event, a web technologies event, and a web community event. Um, we were keen, that's why we were keen to make sure that it was free. Um, and that anybody could attend, and um, and so you know we're um, a, a, and all of the things that we're going to be talking about here are technologies that are available across browser, cross device, that kind of thing, because that's kind of part of the heart of the web. Um, my my name is Dan Applequist, and I work. F um, I have been working on web tech for probably a long time. I seem to, yeah, forever, pretty much. Um, so I think that in 2005, I was here in Barcelona to not only for one of the Mobile World Congresses, but also um, to run a workshop or to help put on a workshop for something called the Mobile Web Initiative, which is something that we started in W3C, um, where we were working with very, very early mobile devices that had web browsers on them, believe it or not. This was pre-iPhone days, so a lot of you are probably like, oh my god, I can't believe this old guy is talking about the ancient history so much. Um, the, uh, but we've come so much, we've come so far from then, but, uh, since then, uh, but in many ways, uh, a lot of the challenges are still the same, and we have the same dynamic between um, the choice that developers often have to uh, develop a web app, a web application, or to develop a mobile application, um, you know, uh, using native technologies, using whatever native technologies they have uh, to hand. Um, you know, a lot of what we're working in, working with right now, in, and Diego's going to talk some about that, is um, uh, in Samsung Internet is kind of bringing these new web technologies to the fore, so that it makes it easier for web developers to get their application to as many users as possible. Um, I also do a lot of work in standards, and I uh, work in W3C, which is the main standards body for HTML5 and other kinds of technologies that are underpinning the web platform. Um, we're going to hear from Dom from W3C about some of the stuff that's happening there. And I've been very um, lucky to be able to work for, with uh, folks from Mozilla, uh, which is another fantastic organization that is supporting the open web, and we, we're very lucky to have two speakers uh, from uh, Mozilla with us today, Salva and uh, Belen. Um, uh, Belen, who I worked with at Telefonica as well when I was at Telefonica for my sins. So um, anyway, welcome. We're going to kick off. I think we're just going to go right to uh, Dom, first of all, who's going to tell us about what's happening in W3C with mobile web tech. Is there other stuff that I need to mention that I haven't talked about? I haven't said the health and safety thing because, you know, because we're not in Britain. That's right. So uh, uh, is there any other stuff that I need? I already mentioned about Swedish beers. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. After each talk, I'm going to go out and solicit uh, questions from you, and you know the usual thing is like nobody asks a question, right? But if it, but if you ask, if somebody does ask an intelligent question, a nice question, a good question that I think is particularly useful, then you will get a pair of these amazing Samsung Internet socks, which we have created. Um, these not only sport the Samsung Internet logo but also have great things like HTML5 logo on them and stuff like that. So these are web socks suit suitable for all uh, sizes. OK, so with that, <laughs> get your thinking caps on about good questions. OK, Dom. So maybe it's my 
Let me see if you're on screen now. Yep, not that one. There you go. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I strongly recommend asking questions. The slots are very comfortable. Um, so as uh, Dan introduced, I'm Dominique Azelmasio. I work for WCC. So the WCC is a World Wide Web Consortium. We are this white tower that uh, every so often emits a new standards for the web. Uh, in practice, we are uh, nice people. We like to work with developers and try to get you a good API, if not great API, it's always a, a challenge. You may have suffered from some of our less good APIs, but uh, hopefully you'll be uh, helping us in the future making only great APIs. So WCC does standards for the web. We have you know, obviously HTML5, all these great CSS modules that you either love or hate, and uh, all these JavaScript APIs that you uh, uh, may or may not have heard about. What I'm planning to do today is to review some of these APIs very quickly, give you a uh, perspective as to why you know, the web actually has uh, come of age for uh, being a good mobile platform for mobile applications. Um, I, I will also spend quite a bit of time explaining how you as a developer can get involved in the standardization process. Most people I talk with uh, when I tell them I work for WCC, you know, they get this picture of uh, old wise men in a white tower working together trying to get the, uh, the, the standard on their own, but that's not at all how WCC works and we want to make it even more open to feedback, input, and uh, interaction with developers. So I'll spend some time explaining, if you're interested, what are the you know, simple steps you can go through to actually uh, make your voice heard for you know, building the next generation of uh, web technology. So web platform evolutions. Uh, one of the very depressing uh, patterns that I've heard in the past couple of days when talking with uh, various people at the Mobile World Congress is, oh yeah, the web is great, but you know, we also have our mobile strategy. Like that two distinct world, there is the web world and the mobile world, and you know, I've been in the web field for uh, probably as long as Dan, and in the mobile web field for as long as Dan. And uh, we've been spending a lot of time and efforts in making sure the web is not something separate from the mobile. It's uh, instead, uh, and I think at least I'll try to convince you of that, it's now getting a particularly useful platform for mobile because it brings all the nice things that uh, I think many of us like about the web. It's an open platform, it's one where you don't need to install anything, everything is available through social network, through email, through whatever sharing mechanism you can imagine. And uh, we have been bringing a lot of technical evolution to that platform to make it even more appealing for new use cases, new usages, and I'll quickly review some of those. Um, so one topic on which you'll hear a lot more from uh, Salva, I think as the third or fourth talk, I'm not sure, uh, is uh, progressive web apps. So behind that uh, term, it's the notion that with the latest set of web technologies, including service worker, web app manifest, you can make web applications that are much more integrated into the mobile uh, operating system, uh, web applications that will work seamlessly offline, web applications that can receive push notifications, web applications that will appear on the home screen of the user. So if you need something that has a high engagement value, you often hear that for engagement, you need to go native. But nowadays, with uh, progressive web apps, you can actually build really engaging web applications that will you know, sit right in front of the user and still benefit from the fact that you can actually you know, promote this app through social networks, through whatever URL sharing, me sharing mechanisms you can think of. Again, I will not be sp spending a lot of time on this because we'll hear a lot more on the topic, but if you haven't heard about progressive web apps, pay a lot of attention to that presentation. It's probably one of the most important evolution of the web platform in the past uh, years. I mean, to me, it's basically the equivalent of what Ajax changed to the web uh, some 12 years ago, uh, but for mobile now. So do pay attention to this. 
Because another thing you frequently hear about uh, native apps when you compare them to mobile is that they are much easier to monetize, and uh, that is true. I mean, you have this uh, integrated payment mechanism that comes with uh, both Android and iOS. And, you know, although apps for which you pay for are less frequent nowadays, or at least less successful, the in-app purchase type of uh, monetization is still quite su successful on mobile platforms. But there are good news coming out there with uh, work that we started a few months ago uh, that we've called very originally the Web Payment API, which, uh, as the name indicates, basically al allows you to get payments done on the web very easily. The, the basic idea is to streamline the checkout process so whenever you have to pay, you don't have to go typing, uh, you know, uh, credit card numbers or enter your PayPal account or anything. Basically, the browser acts as a broker for your payment method. So you register once your credit card or your PayPal account, whatever payment mechanism uh, your browser supports, and then as a developer, you only have to use that uh, uh, method, payment request, to actually trigger the checkout process and integrate all the things that comes with it. I mean, so I gave a very summary view of that API because of course you need to deal with things like currency, shipping address, uh, taxes and so on, and the, the API is built around this constraint. But it means that you can now really integrate uh, that type of monetization into your web application. It's no longer that you have either to go through uh, a complicated onboarding process or just use uh, advertising. Now payments are a, a first-class citizen part of the web platform. So it's, uh, you know, still an emerging technology. You can already find it in uh, Google Chrome in Samsung Internet. There is an initial implementation in uh, Microsoft Edge. But again, I think it's a fairly interesting evolution of the platform for whoever use that type of monetization. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the metaverse. It's uh, the notion of uh, an alternate universe that you access through something like uh, what we call now virtual reality. And uh, virtual reality is uh, also coming to the web. We'll hear a lot more about uh, that from Diego later as well, in particular through a technology called uh, WebVR. Uh, I was organizing a few months ago a, a WCC workshop on the topic of how can we make the web a good platform for virtual reality. Uh, and so the, the workshop report is online. We had, I think, uh, excellent conversations there. The web has a lot of potential there. Again, one of the difficulty with VR nowadays is that you have to download an app and you know, get into a specific store. You have to deal with the fact that different, uh, uh, different headsets will have different SDKs. And the web already provides a solution for that. With that web VR API, you can build the contents once, and it will work on your Oculus, it will work on your Vive, on the Samsung Gear, and uh, any kind of headset you can think of. So it's a great way to, uh, to develop a VR content and you may get, uh, again, all the benefits from the web platform in terms of openness and shareability. Another topic close to my heart, uh, real-time communication. So uh, in WCC, I also manage the web RTC working group. Uh, who is familiar with web RTC in the room? Just out of curiosity. Okay, so not so many people. So WebRTC basically makes it possible to build something like Skype or Hangouts right into the browser. It provides you with a set of APIs to, well, first access uh, both microphone and camera uh, stream from, uh, the, well, from the device on which it's running, and then to stream that with a very low latency and in a peer-to-peer -peer session to any other browser. So it's an extremely powerful to integrate any kind of audio video communication into any existing web app. So any case where you can think that, uh, for instance, a human interaction would simplify you know, engagement or conversion or you know, just communication in general, WebRTC brings this as a you know, free feature uh, into any web browser and that has, you know, it has already proved to be a fantastic potential with many existing products, but more generally speaking, I think it's a, a field of a lot of possible innovation in terms of building new type of services and applications. 
And in addition to uh, enable audio video communication, it also enable peer-to-peer -peer data. So, I mean, if you look at the history of disruption and innovation in the past 20 years, uh, web has been big, peer-to-peer -peer has been big, but they were two completely separate uh, fields. With WebRTC, you actually bring them together. And I think that will make for some uh, interesting sparkles. Uh, there is already a version of BitTorrent uh, built for the web called uh, WebTorrent, but it's just one type of usage for peer-to-peer -peer data. There are also peer-to-peer -peer CDNs and peer-to-peer -peer file exchange in local setup and so on. So again, if you're not familiar with uh, that specification, I think it has a lot of potential. It's already available in uh, most browsers. You probably will have noticed that Safari is not in that list. My hope is that it's not yet. Uh, clearly, they have started working on implementing it, but uh, I don't have specific uh, details about when uh, it might show up there. Uh, another topic on which I work in DLCC is the integration of uh, sensors into the web. So in particular, with the explosion of uh, you know, the Internet of Things, there are more and more gadgets that you can connect to your devices, either via Bluetooth or via other mechanisms. And the web is starting to support APIs to enable the integration of these uh, sensors into the platform. In particular, we are developing a generic framework for creating sensor APIs to make sure that all the things that you need to get right about sensors in terms of uh, frequency of polling, in terms of exposing the data at the right uh, uh, rate and so on get, get done right. And we will be applying that framework to a number of uh, sensors such as uh, classical motion sensor for gyroscope, magnetometer, or um, accelerometer, as well as more uh, simple ones such as proximity detection and ambient light. So this is still, I would say, fairly experimental. Right now you can only find it in, <coughs> in uh, Chromium build, but if you're particular service or application has need in, the, in, in that field, in the field of uh, sensors integration. It's, uh, I think, a very interesting work to follow. Another set of developments that I think make the web a compelling platform on mobile devices is the notion that it can be integrated within uh, the local context in which the user uh, is operating. Uh, and again, there are a number of under development technologies that I think will uh, be useful in this space. Uh, one called Web Bluetooth, which is uh, already available in Chrome as what they call uh, an origin trial. That is, you have to register to, to use it for now. But what basically what Web Bluetooth does is that it's enabled to connect with any Bluetooth low energy device and exchange data with it. So you can imagine application of that for toys, for uh, healthcare with you know, smart health devices, and any other, any other kind of uh, Bluetooth enabled devices interaction. And I think that's a fairly interesting development if instead of having to download an app for each and every device you might get around, either your device or device you need to interact with in a specific location, if instead of having to download an app, just, you know, either flash a QR code or get a URL from wherever, then you remove completely a big part of the friction in starting that usage of local devices. A similar API called WebNFC enabled the integration of NFC tags with web applications. So again, a good way to reduce the friction for uh, working with uh, NFC services. And that comes in complement with uh, another technology that is uh, starting to get adoption. Uh, have you heard about the physical web? Does that ring the bell for anyone? So very few people. So the physical web are Bluetooth beacons that advertise URLs. Uh, and the goal for that is that when you go into a specific place, your browser can detect that there are around you specific devices that you can interact with through a given URL. So you can imagine a beacon on a bus stop to say, you know, this is the, where the next bus uh, will, will be arriving. You can imagine a beacon on a vending machine to you know, pay for the particular thing you're trying to buy. 
So lots of applications of integrating the web into the everyday's life, uh, into the specific context, again, of the, the user. We've also looked at other fields where this could play, like uh, geofencing, indoor location, but this one are currently not anywhere as advanced. So I hope that I've convinced you that uh, the web is uh, still, and even uh, 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 particularly now, an interesting platform for mobile devices. But I'm sure you have also plenty of features that the web is not providing yet, or that the web is not providing correctly, or that where the web is not as good as it could be. And the only way we can fix it is if we hear about it. I mean, WCC, you know, the st WCC staff, we are 70 people. The WCC community at large is probably 1,000 people. But there is no way that a platform as big as the web uh, will be done right if we only hear about 1,000 people, no matter how good they might be. And that's why it's extremely important for us to hear from developers on what needs to be changed, what needs to be added, what needs to be fixed. And so I want to spend the next few minutes on explaining how you, as a developer, can actually get involved. There are you know, different levels of engagement. I don't expect uh, most of you to spend the uh, long days reading mailing lists or GitHub issues in depth, but you know, just being able to interact with uh, the various specifications, the various groups in WCC, whenever you find that something is missing or wrong, I think is uh, important for us and hopefully will be also useful to you to you know, basically make the web the right platform for you. So how can you participate in WCC efforts if you're so inclined? The, I guess the first kind of action you can imagine is bringing use cases and requirements. So you're developing a, an app Maybe you've started native and you want to move to the web or you, you're a big web fan and you want to do the next thing in web but there is a gap and you don't know how to get around it. That's where we want to hear from you. Uh, hear from what is not available today and maybe hear from what are the specific aspects of the use case you're thinking of that would need to be reflected in uh, the technology that would address it. So that's the first thing. Then uh, getting feedback on spec as we go, improving specs in terms of their design, in terms of their uh, feature set, help with adoption and implementation, and I'll explain a bit more what I mean by that. And for the most motivated of you, uh, I won't uh, shy away from the fact that it's not the easiest thing on earth, but from the, for the most motivated of you, help creating new spec, addressing new features uh, directly. So if you have a use case or requirement that you think is not currently addressed by uh, a given spec, there are roughly two approaches you can follow. If there is a spec that kind of address what you want, but not quite, the best way to get input to the group is by uh, following information that uh, you can find in WCC specification. So each and every WCC specification starts with boilerplate that probably most of you wouldn't want to read, but there is one piece of information that can be useful in that case, which is uh, which email address to contact to give that type of input. Uh, but if you're not sure that there is an existing spec, or if you're sure there is no existing spec and uh, just wouldn't know how to get started, uh, we have in WCC this uh, WICG, which stands for Web Platform Incubator Community Group, which you can, can find at WICG.io, which among other things provide a forum for anyone to participate and say, you know, I have this use case or I have this pain point. Is there any existing specs that address it? If not, uh, how can I help getting work started there? Or why isn't this working as I expected it would? So it's not a stack overflow in terms of, you know, giving support on uh, using existing APIs, but if you have a specific needs uh, for the web platform and you don't know if it is either addressed or if someone has started looking at it or if you want to help getting it started, uh, starting from WICG.io is probably your, your best bet. So that's an example of, uh, you know, so 
I don't know if you know Lee Avio, she, she's not your random web developer, but she is a web developer, and uh, uh, she started uh, a few days ago a proposal to you know, add a new method for uh, determining the list of event listeners. So in this case, you know, it's uh, someone with a fairly advanced understanding of what the web platform, how the web platform works, but any other proposals are a lot more open-ended and simple. So that's what you would do if you wanted to, to get started with uh, WICP. Uh, so if you are the kind of person that actually read those specs when you want to use the technology, you go there and you, you know, try to understand how it works and so on. It's extremely useful to us when we hear back from developers saying, you know, this thing, it doesn't quite work, or it doesn't work that way in the browser. Are you sure you wrote it correctly? Or how could you come up with such an API design? It's a disaster, do something else. I can't possibly use that in my code. Or if you think, you know, well, okay, that's useful, but I would also need to be able to do this or that before I can actually use it in production. So that's extremely valuable feedback for us. The best way for us to hear from this kind of uh, issues is via GitHub. All of our specs nowadays are developed on GitHub, so if you're using GitHub, you won't be, uh, uh, you, you will find your way quite easily in how to file issues and so on. So if you want to, in particular, see all the repos that we have, they are on github.com slash WCP. Uh, one way you can e go even go further, uh, if you find a bug and you know how to fix it, or if you even just found a typo and want to help make our specs more readable, we happily take a pull request on our specs. So again, if you're familiar with GitHub, the pull request process won't be too much of a challenge for you. There may be dragons because we also have uh, needs around IPR, so if you are making what we call substantive contributions, we may ask you to do more legally than so on. But uh, I'm happy to help if that happens. And in any case, there are plenty of contributions that uh, will not raise any of these dragons. Hopefully. Another way you can help, and that's probably something many of you either don't know or don't realize, is by helping with uh, adoption. Of course, you know, WCC does a lot of standards and uh, the question I almost systematically get back is, okay, that's a nice standard, but I can't use it in this or that browser, so it's not very useful to me. And that's very fair. <laughs> uh, but you can actually help with that too. Uh, and there are two main ways where you can help. One is simply by advocating for the adoption of a spec in a given browser. So browser vendors are actually extremely aware of the pressures they get from developers for this or that application. So if you're you know, developing a product and you can't implement it in this or that browser because it's missing that or that spec, you should definitely let them then know. You should you know, tweet about it. You should uh, star whatever bugs is in their system if there is one, file a bug if there isn't. And that definitely helps them understanding the you know, dynamics behind a given standard because you know, browser vendors cannot implement everything. They have to make choice. They have to define their priorities. And one of the ways they do that is by listening to what the market tells them. And in many ways, developers are the best way to hear from the market on this topic. The other way, which is uh, also, I think, uh, more advanced, less easy to get into, but also extremely powerful, is by helping us uh, uh, testing browsers that implement our specs. So I won't go into the detail for that because it's uh, quite a bit involved. But for people that want to get a much better understanding on how our specs work and how to get browsers to actually comply with them rather than just wave around them, uh, I suggest you go to testthewebforward.org and you'll learn more about how you can actually get involved into our testing effort. And now for the bravest among you, uh, there is also the possibility of actually starting completely new work, like you are extremely motivated to get something happen in web browsers, and you think there is a real need, a real potential, and you also have the, uh, either a willingness to learn or an existing understanding on how you build a web specification. And you can do that. Uh, WCC offers, again, a number of mechanisms to help you get started. 
I already mentioned the WICG earlier, uh, WICG.io. That group not only listens to use case and requirements, but it also accompanies developers for creating completely new specifications. And more generally speaking, you can uh, use uh, mechanisms that DAOTC uh, created a few years ago that we call community groups, which are groups that anyone can uh, start and uh, can participate into. Um, and these community groups aim at facilitating the development of new specifications. Uh, but one thing I do want to emphasize is that while a lot of us are either familiar with the specifications or the API we find in the browser, before you can get anything adopted, anything started, the real goal is not to create a spec or even a group, it's to create a community around whatever feature that you have in mind. That is, you need to make sure that there is a, 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 a demand for the particular feature that you're thinking of, that there is a possibility of implementing it. I mean, uh, a web rocket API might not be the easiest thing to get uh, momentum behind. So it's really first and foremost trying to find people that have the same need as you, trying to interact with browser engineers explaining your use case and so on and so on. So these are the mechanisms, but they are not the end goal. So the, the way of getting started is by creating a community per, per se. Uh, just to illustrate one uh, story where people you know, had a need that wasn't being addressed by the standard and they came together and actually got something out. It took a lot of effort. It wasn't easy. It was sometimes frustrating, but they did it. It's a responsive image story. So uh, may, hopefully you're familiar with the fact that nowadays in HTML, you can, you can declare that a given image will be uh, sourced from a different point depending on the resolution of the screen. So that's basically what responsive Im images are. And this started by an effort from a number of web designers and developers wanting that feature in the web platform, not getting it from the traditional standardization process, getting together, making a proposal, and uh, getting uh, momentum behind the proposal. And nowadays, you know, the, this feature element, which is one of the pieces behind responsive images, you know, has found extremely wide adoption. So again, I won't pretend it's an easy process. Many people uh, suffered through it, and if you were to do that yourself, you probably would as well. But it works. I mean, when you think about it being a bunch of people wanting something and finally getting it deployed on billions of devices, well, that may be worth a, a bit of pain. So um, again, uh, I certainly encourage the most motivated of you on looking into community groups, maybe into the specific case of the responsive images. So that's all I wanted to tell you today. You can get in touch, uh, of course, after this talk. You can also contact me by email on uh, dom at dalc.org. It's easy to remember. I'm also on Twitter and GitHub as don't call me Tom, uppercase. And uh, my slides are already online. If you want to follow the various links, you can find it on kwz.me slash uppercase w0. And thanks a lot for your attention. Okay, any questions? Questions for Tom? Yes. So that's a, a great question. I mean, uh, so the management of permissions is uh, traditionally <laughs> one of the most, I mean, at least one of the most difficult aspects when designing new sensitive APIs, because you obviously you don't want any web page to start, you know, your mic or your camera without your consent. Right, right now the approach that has been that uh, each and every API comes up with its own specific prompt and specific uh, approach to permission granting. More recently, we've started having a more creative approach. There is a, a permission API that lets you determine whether a given 
browser has already granted access to a given permission or not. It may, it's not clear yet, it may also uh, allow for requesting a new permission and in particular with some interesting uh, approach around uh, not necessarily bundling but at least uh, uh, triggering the permission at the right time because that's also a regular issue with uh, permission prompts. You don't want to annoy the user at uh, any random time. So uh, overall I think there has been pretty good progress. Not everything is done yet but we are definitely working quite actively on it. Uh, another aspect that makes it actually even more challenging on the web is that there is permissions for the main page, but there are also iframes and iframes and iframes and iframes. And again, there is a proposal there that is in fairly good shape and hopefully will be deployed in the upcoming few months. Which are you referring to again? Uh, feature policy. Feature policy. Policy. It's a new one. Okay. Any uh, other questions for Dom? No? Yes? No? Okay. I think we're going to move on. Thank you. Thank you, Dom. Um, we certainly, Dom will be around. You can ask him questions more about engaging in the web platform. Okay.